Hey, this is a Hakawadi production. My guest today is a Saudi Arabian filmmaker, actress, and artist. She first made headlines in 2016 when she starred in the film Baraka Meets Baraka, a romantic comedy that was produced in Saudi Arabia but was released in Germany because cinemas were still banned in Saudi Arabia. She also captured the world's attention with The Other Story Project, a collection of personal stories, 5,000 of them, submitted by people and left in cafes around Jeddah, her hometown. Out of this, she made a film, plays, and art, which have been shown all around the world, telling a very different story about the people of Saudi Arabia from the one we usually hear. She's just wrapped up filming two new films, and she's working on a new book. Joining us from Cairo, Egypt, please welcome the very talented Fatima Albanawi. Fatima, welcome. Thank you, Nadia. How are you doing? I'm doing well. <laughs> You're in Cairo, right? I am. That is correct. I'm in Cairo. So I first heard about you a couple of years ago when there was a lot of buzz around the Other Story Project. Um, you were featured in Time. You were interviewed on French television. Why do you think there was so much international interest in that project? Wow. Um, I like this introduction. <laughs> the Other Story Project is a, is a big part of my heart and my passions. And uh, as it manifests storytelling in a very raw format, um, direct from people. And I think that um, in itself is something that attracted people as well. Uh, the nature of the project is perhaps uh, maybe new in my region, uh, particularly in Saudi Arabia. Uh, a lot of the stories that we do get to hear or we do get to produce are stories that are often told on our behalf or they're put in formats and categorized in ways that are somewhat familiar now, you know. It's like everyone can tell you a bit about Saudi and it's probably going to be the same thing. Uh, the Other Story Project highlights uh, real stories from the ground, direct, without filtration, without censorship, without uh, expectations. And I think that's the beauty of, um, you know, really being on the ground and connecting with people directly. Right. And the stories that you collected are just basically regular people's normal lives. Um, one of the stories that you featured on your Instagram account was about, I think, a Saudi man who describes how he was sent to the U.S. Um, to serve as his sister's chaperone while she was studying there. And he was so excited, not because he was going with his sister, but because he could go and finally learn to be a mechanic, um, which I guess had always been his dream. Is it kind of frowned upon to be a mechanic in Saudi Arabia? I'm just curious. <laughs> um, yes, I mean, I would say that a lot of people such as this story, you know, sheds light on this uh, ordinary man. Uh, there are some expectations for what jobs uh, fit Saudi is or also what, what jobs fit a lot of people in so many different countries, you know, uh, in Saudi particularly, we don't get to see a lot of Saudi mechanics, their labor jobs and their, you know, specific to certain also nationalities that we've sort of just become accustomed to. But this man really shows his passion and and it speaks about his willingness to go as a chaperone to his sister, but at the same time make use of uh, reaching out and, and really, you know, trying to delve into something that he that speaks to him. Right. And I know what you're talking about. I think in, in places like uh, in the GCC, those kind of labor jobs are, are not paid well at all. And meanwhile, in the U.S., mechanics can actually make a really good living. So he ended up, I guess, establishing a business there and he was really happy. Um, you kind of touched on this earlier, but why do ordinary everyday stories like this need to be told, in your opinion? What drove you to feel like this was necessary? Wow, uh, so many stories hit home, you know. I mean, I believe that the more the story is personal, the more it is universal. And uh, the more you are raw and accepting to your vulnerabilities and yourself, and the more you reach out and have the courage to own your narrative, the more your story is uh, heartfelt and relatable and universal per se, you know? So I think it was very important, especially that I started the Other Story Project when I just graduated from my master's degree in the U.S. And so I did see and experience firsthand 
what it was like to be under the spotlight, to uh, constantly receive questions, uh, to receive uh, people's thirst and curiosity to know directly from me, to overcome what the media outlets had had already put out there, and instead to speak to a Saudi, to speak to a Muslim, to speak to an Arab, to speak to a woman, to speak to a working woman, to an academic woman. Um, and I think, you know, that thirst made me uh, stop uh, pointing fingers at uh, who's responsible or um, why is this uh, the most common narrative? Why are there stereotypes about Saudis? And instead, sort of be proactive, right? And say, we are people that have stories. And the one thing I will do is literally go to the street, speak to people, and uh, tell them to write their story. And that's what happened in in simple form. <laughs> yeah, it was quite a creative project. Um, and you ended up, you know, having all kinds of iterations of it. Uh, you've made a film, you did some performance art, um, and then, of course, the, the visuals that came out of that. Um, but one of your earliest successes uh, was Baraka Meets Baraka, which was a film that was submitted to the Oscars back in 2016. It looks really funny, by the way. I only saw the trailer. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find it anywhere uh, online. But you basically played a blogger who had to marry a more traditional Saudi guy. Um, it looks like the kind of film that would appeal to a really wide audience, as opposed to many other Saudi films that we're accustomed to, which are really more aimed at a GCC audience. Is that film representative of what's being produced in Saudi Arabia these days? Is the film industry changing? Wow, huh, so many things happening there. Um, when I first started uh, working in cinema, uh, it was actually simultaneous to when I started the Other Story Project. It was in 2015 when I just graduated. And this thirst to tell stories, this thirst to tell our narrative was uh, budding, you know, amongst our um, friends and families and our generation. We had lived years and years consuming um, and sort of accepting what's being told on our behalf, but never had the guts to go and write something simple and, and share it. And again, as I said, the more personal it is, the more universal it becomes. So the team was very small, uh, the crew, the cast uh, for Baraka Meets Baraka. And by the way, you can find it on Netflix International. It's not on Netflix uh, Middle East, but it is available on Netflix International. And um, one thing about that is that I always say there are some filmmakers, amongst them I would consider myself, in Arabic we would say mukhadram, which means that they had experienced a pre and a post era of the same thing. You know, the people that had experienced two parts of the coin or two sides of the coin are mukhadramin. And you, you sort of experience firsthand what it is to... Uh, work simple, work with uh, little, uh, you know, financing with, uh, I would say, you know, more heartfelt, passion driven versus uh, the more commercial, you know, checking uh, off lists and uh, making uh, quotas and numbers of films per, per year. Uh, now, although both are important to create a cinema industry in Saudi, um, I had the privilege and the honor to experience both sides and to care for both and to see, you know, what it is, uh, how important it is to create commercial films, but to still uh, hold on to what makes you unique. And I think uh, globalization had really hit all our homes. You know, they, uh, one thing about globalization is uh, that it flattens our differences and that is beautiful in its own. But also one unique thing about all of us is that we do have our uniqueness and our what makes us stand out. And um, bringing that, owning it and continuing shedding light on it, amongst other things that make us similar, is something very important. It makes your story relatable. And um, people are curious. You know, I am curious to learn about other cultures. If I watch a film and I just feel like it's very similar without any uniquenesses. Um, I would feel like it's being curated for me or tailored for me to my appeal. And that sort of, um, you know, switches my 
attention to I don't know it's sort of like I like something that is coming from its home and still addressing an international audience yeah it's it's a difficult you know it's a difficult equation I must say it's not the easiest but it's so important to sustain that and try to achieve it right and I think in general people like to see new things and learn new things um, especially now people are curious about the world around them um, but Saudi Arabia to go back to your country has initiated some pretty bold social and legal reforms they're also transforming their economy following MBS's uh, vision 2030 plan but what are the biggest changes you've seen in your country over the last I don't know four or five years and I mean that from your perspective on the ground your friends, your network, you're obviously connected with a creative community there. Have your lives changed at all on a day-to-day basis? I believe so. Uh, I do believe so. I mean, uh, some things haven't really changed. Uh, It's more of the image opening up, speaking more. And this is as a result of media again, but also tourism, international opening the borders for international tourism. So this didn't really change. It's just people have more access to know and to experience firsthand what it is to be in Saudi. But I think on, you know, addressing your question on a more day-to-day basis, some things did change. Yeah. Um, Working in the cinema industry in 2015, 2016, also 2017, uh, was sort of insecure, unstable, you know. Uh, I mean, I was working on the other story project uh, on a very, uh, you know, low budget, um, Uh, independent, um, also all our cinematic uh, works have been under the same initiatives, very personal, uh, very family oriented. And now the funds, the initiatives being taken by the Ministry of Culture, by by the Ministry of Entertainment, by, you know, by so many different entities, uh, by uh, the commission in Al-Ula and, you know, so on and so forth, have really enable the creative community to feel like they can stand on ground, they can stabilize their initiatives, they can be more sustainable. And I think this is the biggest fear that a lot of creatives have, not only in Saudi Arabia, but all over the world, to sustain your creative work, you know. I can make a film today, but would I be able to make another film after two years? Answering that questions, uh, that question makes me or reassures me and gives me the confidence to continue working you know, in what I'm doing and the confidence and the the comfort you have, you know, really gives you that uh, boost. Of course, uh, needless to say, the recognition, the uh, awards, the the appreciation, we're at the end of the day, we are creatives and uh, we're very sensitive. (laughs) So if you know that you put your heart and soul into something and then you are not certain uh, where it would uh, reach Or sometimes also my thirst to show my work to my family and friends, to my communities in Saudi Arabia is very important. There is a nice uh, reward when I, you know, see and experience an international audience watching my work. But there's a completely different feeling of of love and, and reward when I see my own communities watching it and laughing and crying for it, you know. So opening cinema uh, theaters in Saudi Arabia had really given that, uh, you know, given us that boost, um, uh, given also our communities that comfort to know that Fatma can disappear for three months filming uh, a new work and they will get to see it. They will not have to struggle to watch something that their colleague had worked on. Uh, Before it was more vague and, you know, including my family, they didn't know what I did. Now they get to see it, they get to experience it because I'm filming near them I'm filming I'm entering the house after a long day of shoot and they get to see they we get to speak and uh, the film talk the storytelling talk becomes normal it's not foreign anymore and that for me is so important yeah that's a pretty big deal this whole opening up of uh, cinemas and the whole opening themselves to the culture uh, of cinema and film and the arts um Speaking of which, you've been really busy. You're currently on Netflix in the Egyptian supernatural horror series, Supernatural, a uh, supernatural series. I just said it. Um, but in 2019, you starred in Rolem, the first Saudi film to have been commercially released ever in local cinemas. Correct? True. I didn't star in Rolem. I had a guest appearance. Oh, as a French, okay. Uh, 
Yes, um, I actually worked on set on Rolam. So uh, this was uh, the first Saudi to be released in a, a, a local theater. Uh, that is correct. And I think by that time, I really wanted to experience what it is to be part of the crew. Because I did have, as you, as you know, today I'm, you know, directing and writing. And to direct and write, you need to take off your acting uh, hat and put that on the side, uh, <laughs> come down to a less diva position <laughs> and really walk, uh, work with, um, with a crew, yeah. uh, understand the synergy and the, you know, the chemistry that unfolds uh, there. And so I was actually a script supervisor to my colleague, the director, and I had a guest appearance in the role of Sophie. She's a French, uh, French actress from the 70s. So it was a beautiful, beautiful role to play. But it was, uh, as I said, a guest appearance only. Um, I know you played on a show on Shahid, which is a streaming service, right? That is correct. Uh, Al Shak? Yes, I did uh, work on Al Shak. Um, Al Shak was a very, very unique. Uh, case study, I would say, uh, during lockdown. So I uh, worked with the Lebanese uh, team in Lebanon through Zoom. I worked with a local team in Jeddah also through Zoom because, again, we were in lockdown. And with uh, actors in both London and the Emirates uh, in Abu Dhabi. And um, I had uh, co-directed, co-written and starred in that show amongst beautiful uh, people that risked and really took it upon themselves to create during a very, I must say, uh, you know, uh, psychologically challenging times of our lives, you know, when you're in quarantine, you're not really, you're experiencing a different side of you. And um, it was a very small uh, cast and crew. And we wanted to challenge uh, what it is to be a filmmaker during these circumstances would we be able to sustain ourselves? Again, the question of sustainability. And um, it was a horror, again. Uh, and the story uh, revolves around a girl who returns home to her big family uh, villa. But she lives there alone after her divorce. And it is lockdown. And uh, she is uh, being stalked by a person or, a, or uh, you know, yeah, a person who you know, really challenges her to experience, uh, to question herself, her journey during these times. Um, it's a, it's a mini series. Again, the, each episode is only 10 minutes. It's very COVID-19 specific, I must say, <laughs> but it was a beautiful experience. I don't, I don't know if I'll ever experience such a thing again, because, you know, in so many parts of the world, you know, things are coming back to life and, and we're shooting regularly again. But in that time, it was very specific. I'm so happy about the work and the, and the team, the beautiful team and, and Shahid owning that uh, work and really giving us all the support and, you know, and the help we needed to fulfill the project. As you mentioned, you have been back at work shooting. I think you mentioned you're working on a couple of films. Are these Egyptian productions? And can, what can you tell me? Are they coming out this year? So one of them, actually, we started. They're both Saudi and I'm an actor on both of them. One of them actually started. Uh, we started filming it like a year ago, pre-corona. But we had to stop shooting because of the lockdown in Saudi. And it's a co-production between Al Maha Films, uh, a Saudi production that previously worked on uh, Born a King, the story of King Faisal visiting London, and between Lola Arabia, which is a Spanish production. And uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful story. Um, I, it's not yet out, but hopefully soon it will be released. And the other feature film I just finished is also a co-production between NBC Studios and Image Nation. It's a journey between a brother and sister, an unexpected turn of events, I must say, that hinder them from achieving what they want. But they eventually um, unfold necessary layers to achieve that. And uh, it's a very intimate and uh, dark uh, Funny, funny, I must say funny a journey that they take with that. It, it, I just finished it, so I'm still, you know, I get emotional talking about it because I'm just coming out of my character in a way. I can't wait to see it. 
It sounds it sounds interesting. Dark comedies are my favorite. So, um, <laughs> so can I may I ask what you're doing in Cairo? And are they what's happening there? Is it are you in lockdown? Are things normal? I must say the last feature is also dark comedy with a with a hint of action, uh, a bit more than a hint of action, I must say. Um, and what I am doing in Cairo, I am writing on my own feature film for uh, two years now, since 2019. And I'm a believer in the script. Uh, that is what I, you know, resort to when I accept projects as an actor and now more so as a director. And if I want to, you know, be true to what I preach, then I am most, in, you know, first and foremost, working on my script. So I'm in the fifth draft currently, and I chose to be here because sometimes as a writer, you need to disconnect from your comfort zone and your family and friends and community and just really give your characters uh, time and attention. And your story to unfold uh, requires so much of that. So, um, you know, trying to question uh, the flow, the narrative, what happens, a lot of things. And uh, I've been writing a lot. Yeah, that's great that you have the option to do that. Fatima Albanawi, what a great ambassador for your country you are. Thank you so much for being with us. And I wish you the best of luck with everything. Thank you so much for hosting me and for these beautiful questions. And I hope everything we creatives work on get to be shared, experienced, and, you know, we get to hear from our audiences all over the world. Thank you so much. That's it. Hope you enjoyed spending time with us today. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and leave a comment if you'd like. We'd love to hear what you think. Take care.